Hello everyone, welcome back to chapter 10. This is part 11, which is the last part of this chapter. And so some of y'all be really glad to hear that since there's been 11 parts, but they've been short. So I've tried to keep them in little short chunks. And this one, we're gonna look at that kinetic molecular theory one more time and make sure that we understand the postulates and the assumptions of that. And then um, we're also have been applying that to um, Charles Avogadro, Dalton, and Boyle. And, and also we're going to look at Van der Waals. Um, we're not gonna do calculations with Van der Waals, um, but we are, are, you are going to understand what the corrections are. And we're gonna talk about that because we're talking about non-ideal gases now. Okay, so everything else has been an ideal gas in an ideal world, and this time it's going to be non-ideal gases in the real world. So summary for properties of gases, they expand to fill their container. They take the shape of their container. They're very low density. They're compressible, and they also have always have a homogeneous mixture if you're not reacting them together. Real gases do not behave like ideal gases, either at high pressure or low temperatures. High pressure or low temperatures, real gases do not follow those ideal gas laws because ideal gas laws um, assume that there's no attractions between the gas molecules and that basically they're so small they don't take up any space. At low temperatures and high pressures, these are no longer valid because if they're super high temperatures, they're moving so fast that they're going to be all over each other, okay? And if it's a, uh, I mean, sorry, low temperature is where they're gonna be moving very, very slowly, okay? High pressure means that you're gonna be pushing them together, all right? So let's, let's see what this means for us. Um, at low pressure, the molar volume of argon is nearly identical to the ideal gas, but as you increase the pressure, the molar volume becomes greater than the ideal gas. So when you get those high pressures, the argon atoms start to occupy a more significant portion of the volume. So if we put some force to this and we squashed what we had before, to this volume that used to be that volume, these guys are a lot closer together. And so in proportion to the entire volume, then they do take up some space. Now it's not a huge difference by any means, but you know, if we were sending a rocket to Mars, it would be important, all right? Same thing for the, the temperature, as I said, when we get, let me go back to this for just a second. Um, if your temperature is, um, is going to be lower, okay, where they're moving slower, um, then that is also going to affect the ideal gas behavior of those. And so we've heard of Van der Waals before. Johan Van der Waals, um, he was a mathematician really more than anything else, and he modified the ideal gas equation to fit real gases at high pressures. And so he had he came up with two constants after lots and lots of experimental observation and he came up with two constants one to correct for the molecular volume changes at these different extremes and the intermolecular attractions remember van der waals is all about the attractions and how things are pulling on each other and repulsing so the b factor is the Van der Waals constant that has to do with the basically the size of the uh, component, or it it is usually calculated by the moles. The A Van der Waals component or constant is different for every gas because they have different strengths of attraction. So the A factor corrects for intermolecular forces. This is the important part that you need to remember. Okay, and the B part corrects for the volume and how much volume it's taken up. Now, if you notice, this is P times V equals NRT, okay? And so there are tables that you can look at that have an A factor and a B factor 
okay because you'd never remember this for every single molecule and so when instead of doing the straight up PV equals NRT you would plug the A and the B factors in there all right and that would correct for the um, whatever you were looking for and solving for the real gas rather than the ideal gas important for you guys to remember is what A corrects for intermolecular forces and what B corrects for is the volume okay and the and the volume having to do with those um, um, how how many um, how big they are and how much attraction they're going to have to each other so that's the main thing you remember we're not going to do these calculations sorry if you want to you can look some up in the book but um, it's more important for me that you understand how you modify those um, in the world of engineering and, and chemistry and all that, we have programs that do this, okay? But this is how it's done. These are the correction factors for the real gases at extreme temperature and pressures. All right, and that's it. And that winds up our discussion of gases with van der Waals.